Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Ryder here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. The patient in this procedure attended uh, today on an emergency appointment uh, reporting left complete uh, reduced hearing and they also reported a, a muffled sensation like they're underwater. So we examined the ear and the patient has otitis externa, which is a, an infection and or inflammation of the outer ear canal. And you can see uh, in the initial pre-procedure examination video, the patient has got um, ear pus, what we call otter ear, um, coating the, the eardrum. And that's what's giving the patient that sensation of being underwater. So, uh, but it's a very delicate procedure uh, because this otter ear, this ear pus is on the eardrum itself and there's a lot of dead keratin on the eardrum. Now the eardrum, um, it's very thin in thickness. It's more or less about 0.1 millimeters in thickness and it's got three membranes. The outer membrane of the eardrum is a very thin layer of skin, the same skin that actually coats the inner two thirds of the ear canal. So uh, the ear canal is in, th you can think about it in thirds. The outer third is a cartilaginous portion and is a thick layer of skin about one millimeter in thickness. And the skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal, it's, it's almost one tenth, even the fifteenth of the thickness. It's, uh, it's around 0.1 millimeters and le or less in thickness. And that layer of skin that coats the ear canal also uh, makes up the, the more lateral layer of the eardrum. So when I say lateral, I mean closer to the entrance. The middle layer of the eardrum is a fi fibrous layer. So it's a bit of muscle tissue, connective tissue, gives it a bit of strength. And the inner layer, so in the middle layer, um, that's the mucosa layer, that supplies all the blood vessels, the blood um, the capillaries to the eardrum. So I'm just using a fine end tip, so all this procedure is completely form, performed with a fine end gorge. Uh, the fine end gorge is a, a, an attachment to the standard zona suction probe, so the zona suction probe, the diameter um, of the suction probe is two millimeters, whereas the fine end gorge is 1.27 and this is a fine end gorge 18, size 18. And the benefits of a fine end gorge is that if we do come in contact with the eardrum it's less likely to cause any trauma. Because it's narrower as well it provides uh, more finesse say if we're doing delicate procedures like we are in the eardrum you have a bit more control because it's a narrow surface area. It's less noisy as well, so whenever we approach the eardrum, obviously that suction power is going to be noisier and noisier. And microsuction is pretty noisy if you've had it performed before, you realise. So the fine end gorge attachment reduces the noise, and it also, although it reduces the um, the suction power per se, because it's a smaller surface area, in some ways it can actually, if you're focusing on some dead skin, for example, because it's a smaller surface area, there's more pressure, so in some ways, actually, it can be a bit more powerful, uh, but obviously it doesn't suction as much out in one go, because of that reduced surface area. So what I'm doing now, I'm just on the posterior canal wall, I'm just trying to peel this dead keratin, you can see it's very damp and moist. So we are on the bony part of the ear canal, we've got to avoid contact with the bony part of the ear canal because this thin layer of skin I made reference to earlier, it's tightly adhered and attached to the bony part of the ear canal and there's no muscle or fatty tissue and so that makes that inner two thirds of the ear canal extremely sensitive. If you come in contact with it, the patient, believe you me, will, will feel that. So you can see we're making good progress here. We can see the majority of the eardrum and just obviously at the same time, we're just mopping up around the ear canal wall. Here we're on the posterior quadrant of the eardrum. So the posterior means the back part of the eardrum. You can see there's a thin layer of dead skin. So you need a really steady hand for this. Uh, now, if the patient wasn't themselves very steady, I probably would have left this, um, but the patient was extremely good. It's very still. Um, enable me to perform the procedure. Um, whenever you have a patient with otitis external or dead skin, I always try to remove as much debris as I can because that gives the ear the best opportunity to react and respond to any antibiotic drops or um, acetic acid drops. So now we're on the, the attic region of the eardrum. So more specifically, this is the superior anterior quadrant. So the top front part of the eardrum. So if you had a compass right now, that's the north-west. And there's a 
thick layer of skin here. This is a bit tricky to remove now. The patient's ear canal uh, narrows uh, probably about half a centimetre away from the eardrum, and that's called the isthmus. That most people have that, and then the ear canal protrudes back outwards. And we have recesses. The most prominent recesses is at the front part, so the anterior portion on the left, and the infra at the bottom. And it's just very difficult to get access into these little recesses. So what I've actually done, the fine end tip. I've actually bent it slightly so it enables me to get access. And the patient's ear canal and even in the entrance is quite narrow so when you've got two instruments in the ear and the ear canal's uh, inflamed like this, it does restrict your movement somewhat. Uh, now one of the major benefits of endoscopic ear wax removal is because you don't use a speculum to, uh, so with microsuction with a microscope or head loose, the majority of the time you're putting a, a what we call a speculum it's what uh, when doctors look in your ears and they have the ear torch the little black uh, funnel shaped object and that's disposable in between patients so uh, but that narrows that I mean the diameter of the funnel can be, can be about six millimeters to four millimeters where the average ear canal um, diameter can range between in height about a centimeter width about seven millimeters eight millimeters so if you're using a speculum to perform um, ear wax removal with microsuction you're already uh, reducing the maneuverability inside the ear because that funnel is restricting how much movement you have your range of movement as we call it with the endoscope we're not using um, uh, a speculum so it does involve a bit of skill actually because without the speculum you're having to use the, the endoscope and the instrument that you're performing the procedure with to open up the ear canal and straighten it because the ear canal does have two bends you have the first bend um, about half a centimetre in, into the ear canal and the second bend about a centimetre into the ear canal where the, the bony part of the ear canal meets the cartilage part, portion of the ear canal that's probably, uh, that region uh, is also another narrowing, so there's two narrowings, as I said, uh, one near the eardrum and one where the bony part of the cartilage part of the eardrum meet. But that juncture, the osseo, what we call the osseo, cartilaginous juncture, so osseo is another word for bone, it's where your temporomandular joint is, so your jaw joint. So quite often people who have uh, uh, jaw pain, the pain radiates in their ear and they mistake it for a, a, an ear infection, an earache, when actually it's not, it's the TMJ, the temporomandular joint. So I'm just, just um, as I said, I've bent this tip, um, it's just a bit there, and I said we probably could have got away with leaving that, but the patient's really still, so I just bent it a bit more. I had to get the orientation right because I do not, don't want to make contact with the canal wall, so I don't think I got the orientation just quite right here. So in a moment, I'm just going to withdraw, I believe, and I'm going to just go on the anterior canal wall as opposed to the eardrum. And I'm going to come back out of the ear, I believe, if I'm correct, um, and I'm just going to rotate this tip so the bend is angling around the ear canal into that top left corner. Let's have a look. So I have come out. Yeah, I've just. You may not be able to see the bend actually. It's a very a slight bend, but I've now got it in the right angle. So I'm able to go a bend around the bony part, the ear canal here, because this is where it bends, into the corner of the eardrum, the recess. So I'm really pleased with that. The patient was over the moon. Um, the patient asked whether I could upload this video and uh, email his daughter. His daughter is training to be a midwife and she's really into all the, these medical procedures. And um, So um, I'm going to send her my YouTube link after this of her father's ear so she can watch it. So it's just some dead, I just want to see if I can, if any of this dead skin peels. Oh, I think I've done enough already. So the, pa the treatment, uh, the patient previously had an ear infection, was previously uh, prescribed some medication by the doctor. Um, just advice to go to the chemist and obtain some acetic acid in the UK that's branded as um, ear calm. So there's the ear tympanic membrane. I, I did do a pressure test, the eardrum was slightly retracted, um, so it's buckled inward slightly. So I've also recommended some nasal decongestion spray. And the patient's going to use some ear calm, which is acetic acid. When you develop otitis externa, your ear is more of an alkaline pH as opposed to an acidic pH, and the ear should be naturally acidic, and that acidity helps inhibit certain bacterial growth. So this is just a video of the right ear, just so you can compare, that's nice and clear. So going to use some ear calm. I told the patient to keep the ear dry. We don't want to get water in there. Water can just exacerbate the infection. And it's going to use some nasal decongestion spray to try and unblock the eustachian tube. 
um, which will then allow the eardrum to pop back out. It's only a mild retraction. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys, and you're keeping well and safe wherever you are in the world, and um, have a great weekend. Take care. Bye.